You're watching the Highlight Zone with Wayne 15 Sports Director Glenn Marini. Local sports coverage you can count on. This year we had some unfinished business, so hopefully we can go get it this year. It's huge. It's like the conference championship right now. We're stressing it. It is a must win for us. One of our goals is to win out the rest of the season. This game's pretty big for us. Well, we're definitely going to have to find Connor. I mean, he had 44 against us the first time. I mean, just Central Noble Bosco every year, it's a big, big rival in competition. If we play our best game and our opponent plays their best game, that we will come out with the win. Just the energy that comes off that game. I mean, the energy's great, and I just look forward to that. Well, the temperatures may be dropping outside, but the conference races are indeed heating up here on the Highlight Zone. Girls down to the final Friday of the regular season with sectionals tipping off on Tuesday. On the fellas side, we got a small school matchup with some big time conference implications. That's where we start as Colton Howard joins us with your Highlight Zone Game of the Week. Colton? Hey, Glenn. A couple of weeks ago, Back on January 13th, Churubusco and Central Noble met in the NECC tournament. That night, the Cougars winning by 10 on their way to their second straight conference tournament championship. If both teams want a piece of the regular season championship, they're going to have to duke it out tonight. Tonight feeling like a must win. Churubusco at Central Noble. It's your highlight zone. Game of the week. Central Noble ranked 6th in the state's 2A poll. Busco ranked 14th. Cougars on a 12-game winning streak. The Eagles coming off a win on Snyder on Tuesday. First quarter, some say Luke McClure's hair has superpowers, and they're probably right. The senior scoring the first five buckets of the game. Yes, fear the flow is right, my friend. To the second quarter, sorry, your Yoder absolutely feeling it from deep tonight. Like a sniper, the senior knocking it down. Yoder finishing with 18 points. More from him in just a bit. Talking about just feeling it tonight, Jackson Paul brings it up, lets it fly from the outside, hits the three. The Cougars go into the half ahead by five. To the fourth quarter, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Logan Guard soaring through the air and hammering down the slam. Guard finishes with 11 points. Later on, it's Connor Asijin to Sawyer Yoder, the one hand slam. Oh my! Over six foot Landon Jordan, six foot nine. Judges say 10 out of 10. A little revenge from Jordan coming later. The alley oop slam is good for two, but Central Noble runs away with this one at home, winning 67 54. You know, it's a great win. It's a confidence booster for sure. We beat them once in the year, and now this is the second time. So, I mean, we're really going to build off of it, but we're every night in conference is a championship, and to take one home tonight, we, we're still in the race. It's just a mentality. I mean, we go out there, we have better energy than them, and it's just, yeah, we just get it done. We're, we're playing really well right now. I, I like our defense. I like our intensity. Um, it's just a game we got to build off of. Now Now we got two games next week we got to get ready for. Um, another conference game next Thursday. So, again, another conference championship on the line next Thursday. A lot to get ready for. Next up, Central Noble is at Bethany Christian on Monday, while Busco's next game is at Lakeland on Thursday. Glenn, back to you. Man, a lot above the rim tonight in Albion. Hey, as good as Busco and Central Noble have been, Westview actually came into the night leading the conference. Warriors 7 0 in NECC play. Second quarter against Eastside is Brady Yoder with the floater, and it goes. Westview up 18 to 12. No give up, absolutely not, in Ryan Abbott's club. Gabe Trevino driving in the third for the bucket. Westview, though, in the lead, 23-16. This one back and forth all night long. Trevino to Hugh Henderson. Hugh with the huge bucket for three. Cuts it to four. Time winding down in the third quarter. You're going to see Mason Yoder finish the tough layup. This one goes to double overtime, but Westview stays undefeated in conference play, 65 61 over the visiting Blazers. Paul Bateman Gymnasium, Lakeland and Garrett. Lakers 6-6 six six in their first year under coach Chris Kyle. First quarter, Braden Bontrager. It touches every part of the rim and drops as Lakeland takes an early lead. Going the other way for the Railroaders, you're going to see Tyler Gator. And Gator just inside the three-point line, knocks down the shot for the big train. But simply too much Lakeland in this one. It's Mason Douglas, and this would beat the first quarter buzzer as Lakeland wins at Garrett 58-42. Final stop for NECC boys. We got West Noble at Fairfield. The Chargers beat the Falcons by 14 in the conference tournament. Would history repeat itself? Well, almost. Third quarter, Brockton Miller with the jumper. 
And the Chargers looking good. Now going the other way, if at first you don't succeed, you try, try again. Tyson Fry, the miss, gets his own rebound and sticks it back. But West Noble, a little too much. Again, remember they beat Fairfield by 14 earlier this season. They win by 12 tonight. Zach Beers, the sophomore off glass. West Noble 62, Fairfield 50. In the SAC, Homestead, the new number one in the 4A state poll this week. The Spartans at Rod Chamble and the Northrop Bruins. Second quarter, Fletcher Lawyer and Fletcher letting it fly. He had 24 points to the future Boilermaker. Then Lawyer up ahead to Andrew Leeper as Homestead up by 14 in the second frame. Devin Campos, the kid can shoot. He had himself a night for the men in orange and white. Three of his 21, but Luke Goody, he would lead all scores with a game-high 25, including a tough two there as Homestead improves to 17-0, 83-53, Spartans over Bruins. While the Spartans have been dominant, Carroll, Carroll's been pretty darn good too. Both Homestead and Carroll 5-0 in conference coming into the night. Carroll taking on Snyder, Jalen Jackson, a rare miss. He had 35, but Logan Lykenow puts it back as Carroll up by five in the second. Snyder's Grant Brown, Brown from downtown. He drills it. For Jeremy Roush's club and then good look from Aiden Lambert to Trenton Hurst in transition. The Panthers turn the tables. They're now up by five. Carroll though gets some offense here from Cam Hedgecock and assigned to play some college football at Western Michigan next week. He can hoop as well. Then it's Ryan Preston doing what Ryan Preston does as Carroll stays undefeated barely in the conference. A good one. 65 63 over Snyder. The north side knocked off Leo from the ranks of the unbeaten on Monday night. Concordia, meanwhile, looking for its fourth straight win. First quarter, Jordan Green. Better revelation for Northside this season. The youngster with the slam is Northside up 12 9 in the first. Second quarter, David Speckard with the three from the wing. It's a 2012 ball game at that point. Then the other side, how about Luke Speckard drilling the three for the Fighting Brockmans? But simply too much Northside. Bronte Johnson, Tay Tay. Look how easy he makes it look going coast to coast. Only a freshman as Northside takes care of business 73 62. Winger gave Blackhawk a pretty good scare on Tuesday night. The Saints looking for another solid effort against the Southside. And Southside looking good here. Cadell Wallace in for two. And then it's their senior stud, Austin Jordan, working his way into the lane. And it goes. The Archers up by two. But Winger, they've got some offensive players. They're starting to put it together. Xavier Nolan gets the and one. You're going to see the senior Brendan Lytle with the steal and the score here. Back and forth in this one, but it's Southside eventually winning at Riker Gymnasium, 54 to 43. Last stop in the SAC, both Lures and Wayne looking for their first conference win of the season. Who would come out victorious? Well, this one would go down to the wire. That's Jernard Freeman with the and one in the first quarter, and it's a three zip lead for the Generals. Then Jay Sean Hargrave with the bucket, and the Generals out to a six point lead. Lures countering. Johnny Sewell off the good pass. He lays it in. That's Lures' first bucket of the night. You'll see Jernard Freeman hit a three in the corner, and Wayne wins against Lures in a good one, 66-63 Generals over Knights. Speaking of Knights in the Northeast State, Knights versus the Knights. We're talking East Noble at the Castle to take on Norwell. Picked this one up in the fourth quarter. Luke McBride, the coach's kid, for three, and Norwell leads by 10, 42-32. Leighton Bailey for Norwell, going straight to the rack, and Norwell's lead now at a dozen. Max Bender for East Noble going the other way, trying to chip things away. He gets the bucket, but simply too much Norwell at the castle. It's Luke McBride again. Norwell victorious over East Noble, 52 to 34. ACAC boys, Heritage at Adam Central. The Patriots atop the conference standings, 3 0 in ACAC play. First quarter, it's AC working it down low. Ethan Poling, this is a tough team to beat when you're playing at the hangar. Then, Niles Kanapke, about the millionth member of the Kanapke clan to make it on the highlight zone. He drills the three. Heritage in the lead by one. AC flipping it. Nick Neuenschwander for three. But well, you're going to see the big guy, Kiel Eldridge, a D1 football prospect, and why not? He gets the bucket as Heritage continues to look good in the ACAC, 75 to 55.
Best matchup in the Three Rivers Conference, no doubt about it. Peru 5-0 in conference with Co. 3-1. Yeah, we sent the highlight zone to Peru for this one. First quarter, Kane Townsend of Peru. Oh, he sinks the three, and the Bengal Tigers up 5-2. How about more from Peru? It's Matt Ross, and that's just fancy. Peru now up by five. A little more from Peru. You're going to see Kane Townsend coming in with the defense, the little pilfer, and the pair. It's an eight-point lead for Peru, but Whitco would come back and make this a ball game. You're going to see Brett Sikafus with the steal. He would feed Drake Lewis for the bucket, but Peru continues to stay unbeaten in conference play, 60-56, in a nice game over Whitco. Northern Lakes Conference, both Northwood and Warsaw in the title hunt. Both teams 3-1 and one in conference. This was low scoring in the early going, but Bishop Walter drains the three for the Tigers. And you better believe Warsaw was coming to play. Now, Northwood looking good here. It rattles, it goes. That's Cade Brenner for the three. But Judas Simfuque, Simfuque down low for the Tigers as Warsaw wins an important matchup against Northwood, 49 to 42. Final stop for boys basketball. Now we had planned to get a camera there for this one. That didn't happen. I apologize, but uh, the guys that my sports live had are back. Battle of Route 49, Hicksville at Antwerp. Antwerp ranked third in Ohio's Division IV state poll. That's Luke Krause to Jagger Landers. Then it's Krause to Austin Leasty. And Antwerp looking good in the fourth quarter. How about some defense turning into offense? Landers, the big guy. Nice addition to the open court to Owen Sheedy as Antwerp improves to 14. And one, the Archers win it over the Aces, 59 to 42. Well, that is it for the fellas tonight. But after a quick timeout, it's time for some girls hoops. Final Friday of the regular season for the ladies, and that means Carroll trying to clinch its first ever SAC title. Snyder, well, they had other plans. Meanwhile, Homestead's Ayanna Patterson coming off a record-setting performance yesterday, and Garrett looking to finish out conference play undefeated. We got all those games and much more coming up on the Zone. Well, coming into the final Friday night of the girls' basketball regular season, the math on the SAC title race was, was actually pretty simple. At 7-0, a win by Carroll, and the Chargers clinched their first ever SAC crown. A win by Snyder, and the SAC title would be decided by tomorrow's games. Let's go to Kel McCork, the Chargers, on a 16-game winning streak, but this Snyder Panthers team had won nine of their last 11, and it was quite a tight battle. We pick it up in the third quarter. Jack's Destiny Jackson, the pilfer and the pair, as Snyder up by eight, but Carroll turns the tables. Taylor Fordyce, the and one, and Carroll now up 55-51 after three. Fourth quarter, Saniah Jackson with two of her 26 that led the Chargers. Snyder down, not out. We're down the stretch now. Jordan Poole, the freshman. Poole, so cool. She drills it, ties the game at 67, but this is the shot of the game. Delaney Sheets drills the three as Carroll clinches its first ever SAC title, 79-75. Um, it means a lot. We've all worked really hard to, for this, and we're really playing like a team, and it's really showing, so it's really important to us and exciting. Yeah, this has always been one of the goals. We want to go as far as we can. Yes, we've been working really hard, not only in practice, but outside of Carroll as well. We've all been keeping up with our energy and staying in shape and helping get us where we need to be. Homestead's Ayanna Patterson setting a new school record last night with 43 points. Could you keep it up against Northrop? Well, Northrop, they had other ideas. Jasia Scott drills the three for the Bruins. But Adley Stevens would knock one down also for the Spartans as Homestead led by eight in the first quarter. A little bit later, this is not a replay. It's Stevens doing what Stevens does. She drills the three. Then it's Amber Austin down low. You're going to see Amber with a little baby hook right here as Lewis. Maybe not so baby. That was a pretty good hook shot. Homestead, a winner in this one, 60 to 41. Lures looking to get tuned up for a much anticipated sectional game against Norwell on Wednesday night. The Knights at Wayne, third quarter action. Wayne's stud, Shabria O'Quinn, following her own miss, but Lures in the lead, 32 13. Later in the third, O'Quinn again with the layup, cutting into that Lures lead. But Bishop Lures coming the other way. 
Anna Parent taking it to the hoop. The lead now 21 for Mark Pixley and company. Bishop Lures, no all, no breaks, all gas is what I'm trying to say. Janiah Bright off the steal. You know what she's doing then. It's Delaney Bailey popping one in for Bishop Lures as the Knights win against the Generals. 58-43, your final there. A south side looking to right the ship to four sectionals. The Archers hosting Bishop Dwenger. We pick it up in the third, and it's Dwenger kicking it out to Kayliana Hamill. Hamill nails the three. But the Saints down by three at that point, 31-28. Southside starts to warm up. Monica Davis, a freshman, a name to know as she splashes the three. And then a name we've said many times here in the Highlight Zone, the senior, senior Lamaya Woodson. Nobody cleans the glass in the SAC like Lamaya Woodson, the future Youngstown State Hooper, gets the hoop. And then Liv Smith, good to see her happy, healthy, and hooping. She lays it in as Southside beats Dwenger 63-48. 3A number 10 Concordia looking to finish the regular season on a high note. The cadets at north side. This is third quarter, and this is Annika Nelson going coast to coast. Later, you're going to see Miss Nelson going to the rack driving baseline. The cadets in control of this ball game. Let's head to the fourth quarter now. It's the legends. Deja Cheney with a nice move to the rack, but simply too much Concordia in this one at Bay Hay Arena. Molly Bean, drive, deuce, it goes. Concordia, a winner, 55 to 28. In the NECC, Central Noble ranked 13th in the state's 3A poll. The Cougars hosting Busco in the second quarter. Bridget Gray has been an assassin in Albion for a number of years now. Gray hits the three, and Central Noble up in the second, 19 to 7. Third quarter, Mariah Hostead. For Churubusco with the steal and the score, but Central Noble up 20 at that point at 36-16. Fourth quarter, how about this combination? If you're a Central Noble fan, you know it well. It's great to Lydia Andrews for the bucket as Central Noble wins going away 67-28 over the Eagles. Garrett already clinched the NECC title outright earlier this week, but the Railroaders now looking to finish undefeated in conference play. That'd be a big feather in the cap. Bailey Kellum for three. In the first quarter, Garrett out to a two-point lead. Then it's Morgan Ostrowski providing some down-low offense for Coach Bob Lapidot. It's a five-point Garrett lead. However, Lakeland has got Bailey Hartso, and Bailey Hartso is Lakeland's all-time leading scorer, all-time leading rebounder, all-time leader in steals, all-time leader in blocks, all-time leader in everything, right? She gets the bucket for Lakeland, but Garrett had it going. Lakeland did make a run, but the Railroaders would close it out. Taylor Gerke, the bucket, as Garrett finishes undefeated in conference, 62-49. to It's a huge momentum boost for us. Um, we struggled a little bit in the conference tourney, so to be able to come out with the regular season and be undefeated, it really means a lot. And I think it just shows that we're mentally tough and we can go through anything and still pull out a win. And, you know, that's what sectionals and the state championship's all about, is what team's going to be mentally tough enough to go all the way. We got everything we wanted out of tonight, got another victory, finished perfect in one of the best conferences in the state, so I'm real happy. Your gem of the night is next. From Topeka, Indiana, we're the Westview Warriors, and you're watching the Highlight Zone. Yeah! Hey, last week it was Luke Goody pouring in a homestead record 10 threes. The question then is who is next? It's time to find out. It's time for your Gem of the Night, brought to you as always by our good friends at Peter Franklin Jewelers. And the honor well, it goes to Delaney Sheets from Carroll. In the fourth quarter, Sheets hitting the bucket. That was the hugest one in the game as Carroll goes on to beat Snyder and clinch its first ever SAC championship. Now on the boys' side, you got to give it to Sawyer Yoder. It was the game of the week, and it was the play of the game. How about that? Sawyer Yoder. You can call him the nervous carpenter because the kid was dropping the hammer. Sawyer Yoder, Delaney Sheets, they are the winners of your Peter Franklin Jewelers Gems of the Night. Hey, Macedon's first to two against Oakland this weekend. The Dons looking to get back on track at the Gate Center after a tough, tough trip to Green Bay. Dylan Carl says, yeah, that's the way to do it. He slams it home. That's the first two points of the game, which is Pretty good if you're PFW, but it wouldn't 
be the best of nights. Trey Townsend for Oakland with the bucket. How about Jared Godfrey in traffic? It goes. Then you're going to see Bobby Planunas. Cannon to three, as you saw Godfrey getting the tough bucket. However, it's Oakland winning at the Gate Center, 81 to 66. Let's go to the women's side. Nisi Nelson and Ladons looking to snap a 23-game losing streak. It dates back and forth to last season. Wright State would jump out to an 18-zip lead. That's not good. Third quarter, though, Aubrey stuck for three. And then it's a familiar face in a relatively new place. Homestead grad Riley Parker for two. Later, you're going to see Parker pop one in for three as the freshman with the team high 13 points, but the Dons lose their 24th in a row by the final of 77 to 50. Now, Delaney Sheets and Sawyer Yoder did win Gem of the Night honors, but we got to give a shout out also down to the folks in Marion. Jalen Blackman scores 33 as Marion beats Logan Sport, and Blackman passes his dad, James Blackman Sr., for number one on Marion's all time scoring list. Tip of the cap. We'll see you next Friday for Girls Sectionals.